Hi everyone, my name is Whitney Williams. I graduated from ACU from undergrad in 2018 and I played tennis at ACU for four years. Um, the year after that I was the GA for the women's tennis team at ACU and this year I am a part of the coaching staff for the SMU Junior Program so I'm living in Dallas right now uh, doing that. So I'm going to take an example that I use from coaching the kids in the junior program. Uh, it's like an academy at uh, SMU for uh, the juniors that play. So everyone that's trying to get ready for high school tennis or beyond for college or and so forth, whatever their dreams are. So um, a lot of the times on Thursdays we use this um, strategy to help the kids focus and um, help the kids focus and be more um, attentive and focused on what they're doing in practice. So on Thursdays we usually have team tennis so the coaches will including myself will all divide up the kids into even teams so that way they can play against someone that's at their same caliber hopefully and um, but before that we'll bring the kids in we'll explain we're gonna play team tennis um, we'll separate the kids into certain teams and we explain that the winning team will have the reward of not uh, having to do any fitness after Thursday because they're doing fitness all throughout the week, but Thursday will reward the, the people that win uh, in this team tennis. And for the people that lose, um, they'll have some sort of fitness that they're going to do afterwards, whether that's suicides um, or relay races together. Um, but it's really up to what the coaches are feeling that day. And we also take into consideration what the kids want because sometimes you know they're tired of doing suicides or tired of doing really races so we want to make sure the fitness is still fun somewhat if, if we can um, but so that's usually our plan that we do on Thursdays so um, but to get into that I'll talk about um, what negotiate negotiation is which we learn in our book on page three and negotiation is a form of decision making in which two or more parties talk with one another in an effort to resolve their opposing interests. Um, but in this case, what we're going to be more so talking about is the zero-sum distributive um, type of interdependence um, and how we're going to approach this type of negotiation. So uh, the zero-sum distributive uh, is when individuals are so linked together that there is a negative correlation between their goal attainments. So um, in this case, we have two teams. Both teams want to win. Um, but as we know, um, in most competition settings, there can only be one winner and only one loser, or in, or in this case, a team of winners and a team of losers as a whole. Um, so in looking forward, how are we going to approach this type of negotiation? Well, we have distributive bargaining, which means to accept the fact that there can only be one winner given the situation and pursue a course of action to be that winner. So uh, before we got started with the exercise of playing team tennis, we told all the kids, um, you know, that there obviously there can only be one winner. And so there can only be one team that will have the benefit of, of not running or having fitness afterwards. And so they all accepted that. They were aware of um, the benefits of winning and the consequences of losing before we got started. Um, but both teams were on the course of action to be the winner. Um, and with that being said, each team ha uses this thing called the claim value, which in our book tells us that it means to do whatever is necessary to claim the reward, gain the lion's share of the prize, or to gain the largest piece possible. So. In this case, um, the claim value for this illustration would be for each team to be cheering on their teammates, um, for them to be working really hard, moving their feet, being consistent with their shots, um, as well as to be smart with their strategy and um, ball placement on the court. So with each team doing that, they're on the course of action to hopefully winning. Um, but in, in this situation, again, there can only be one winner and only one loser. So uh, by the end, we will tally up the courts that won and the courts that lost to determine which team was the winner, which team was the loser, to um, decide who is going to have the consequence of running or not. Um, and that is my example for this distributive bargaining. Um, with It's with less words than what it would be if you're 
you know, at a car dealership, as we saw in one of our videos, trying to get the price to go down on something. This is uh, having more to do with action as opposed to talking about um, bargaining. Um, this has a lot to do with their skill on the tennis court and what they can do to win. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a really good distributive uh, bargaining example. Thanks.